My family and I, we uh, own uh, living soil farms. Uh, this is my son, Jadrian, and uh, my other son, Micah, and wife, Jan, and Natalia. And uh, my name is Steve, and we uh, produce uh, organic grains and vegetables. Farm together with my father, uh, Corny, and, his, and my mom, uh, uh, Sarah, they were original owners of this of this farm. Uh, they started off as a dairy farm in 1967 or 69, and we had a dairy farm up until 2005. And uh, at that point, we sold the dairy and sold the quota, and we took over the farm, my family, and we uh, uh, started with uh, vegetables and organic uh, grain uh, grain production. We are uh, certified organic. Our vegetables and grains are certified organic. Uh, that means that we've had a, it's a third party inspection process that inspects our uh, farming practices and our documentation of that. Uh, the public is ensured that, that uh, it's not just us saying that it, we're certified organic, but that we are, uh, that somebody else has said it, uh, an unbiased third party. Some of the regulations uh, around uh, organic, uh, certified organic agriculture include uh, documentation of, uh, of everything that we've uh, applied and, uh, and what we use normally or what are allowed substances are naturally uh, derived uh, soil amendments and uh, cropping practices which include uh, crop rotations and uh, green manure plow down for fertilization and the basic principle behind it is trying to enhance the biology of the, of the plants and the soil instead of just using chemicals to uh, manipulate nature we're trying to work with nature. And the second uh, part of what our objective in organic is trying to improve the taste and the quality of the, of, of the vegetables. So we're trying to do two things. We're trying to eliminate uh, toxins and uh, soluble, uh, undesirable things that get into the water we drink and the air we breathe. And uh, the second thing is to try to uh, build a healthier, tastier plant uh, working with nature. Uh, implement here we got stuck with it and uh, it, it sat in water for about a month until we get a track hoe to uh, to pull it out so now is the time when it's uh, we're putting it back into service so hopefully everything works the way it uh, did before I uh, buried it in a, in a mud puddle <laughs> here we are in our uh, carrot uh, field and uh, these also have been grown organically as has everything um, one of our primary objectives or challenges you might say is that uh, is to improve the fertility of our soil um, and then we're trying to improve the fertility in order to improve the taste and the quality of our, our produce and there hasn't been a lot of research formal research done in this area and so that gets to be a bit of a challenge and takes a lot of time to research and uh, a lot of time on the phone uh, talking to uh, professionals and uh, other farmers with experience uh, in fact, it's widely acknowledged that over the last 50 years, uh, uh, the nutritional quality of our produce has uh, uh, decreased dramatically uh, in the last 50 years. And so we're trying to reverse that. The primary ways that we try to improve quality is uh, by enhancing the biology of the soil. And we do this with form, uh, most predominantly with uh, soil rotations and crop plow down. Another way that we improve uh, a nutritional quality of our produce is with uh, foliar uh, fertilizing sprays and they're uh, completely certified organic so they're derived from natural uh, mine substances and uh, natural uh, ingredients uh, so that could include um, uh, organic molasses, uh, uh, liquefied fish fertilizer and a wide variety of bacterial and fungal inoculants uh, uh, to, to sort of jumpstart, uh, once again, the biological processes in the soil. We can fertilize our crops with our, our organic amendments, or we can water with our drip line here, the red drip line, and that's what uh, keeps us, uh, that's what uh, uh, keeps our plants growing in the, in the heat of the season when it's too dry. And uh, I'll just pull up a few carrots here. They're pretty small yet, but uh, this is what we're trying to do. We're, this is always the most exciting part of the season is to pull up what we've grown and uh, see if we how, how good we are at uh, at uh, at producing a, a tasty, high-quality product. And sometimes we're happy with what we've done, and sometimes we're not so happy with what we've done. Just to talk a little bit about the name Living Soil Farms, that uh, uh, it says really well what we what we're trying to do. We're trying to create living soil farms, and one of the one of the unintended side effects of 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 the name has been some, uh, some thoughts from fellow farmers who, who, who uh, tell me 
uh, well, what do you mean? Is our soil not living then? And that wasn't the intent. Uh, it's just a, a, a name that tries to say what we are trying to do, not necessarily what others aren't doing. And we, we haven't arrived yet. We're, we're not happy with, with uh, we've seen some progress, but we've only been at this for five years. And uh, we hope to continue to always strive to improve uh, soil quality and uh, food quality, as well as be better stewards of the land. This is our uh, potato patch, and uh, we have uh, a total of three acres or four acres of uh, a variety of, of varieties of potatoes. That includes a Benji potato, a Yukon gold, a banana potato, and then several uh, French fry potatoes. A lot of them are de destined for uh, restaurant use. Some are destined for uh, the farm, Saskatoon farmer's market. That's where you can buy a lot of our product. Some people buy off farm, on the, off the farm here as well. So we have some farm gate sales as well. And we have a new venture that we're starting at the Saskatoon Farmers Market, or hoping to start at the end of the month, is uh, making our own French fries. Here's your car chase. Contrary to popular belief, yes, this is hemp. It is not the other uh, psychedelic uh, product or crop. It is sold as a health product. You can make hemp nuts from it, a dehulled product. You can make hemp protein, hemp oil. There's about 10 or 12 different products that they make it from and it's on contract with it. We are trying to reduce our ecological footprint uh, from the transportation of food from uh, far away. And uh, I think if, if, if we do the math on it right now, we probably, ha the locally produced and bought products uh, probably haven't made an impact yet, but I think as, as more and more people demand local, uh, mo local products, uh, the, the, the systems will become more efficient as well as uh, uh, our transportation and distribution systems are, are, will need some time to adjust. They've evolved over the last 75 or 100 years uh, to become a global system. And so that's how our system is, is, is designed. And so it's going to take uh, a decade or two to achieve those kinds of efficiencies, uh, uh, transporting and uh, distributing uh, local products. Success is uh, an interesting concept. Uh, success is when one has done one's best and you see results. Uh, you see improvement from year to year and that can include uh, environmental improvements, uh, uh, yard improvements, uh, uh, crop improvements, facilities improvements, uh, and it's also uh, produce importance, uh, produce uh, quality, and that's probably the most important thing that we, that we strive for and everything we do uh, revolves around trying to improve our, uh, our product.